Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, May 1st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Still got another update regarding CVE 2019-2725. This is the WebLogic deserialization vulnerability that was discovered late last week. Cisco's Talus research team is now confirming that exploits against this vulnerability are active. In particular, Cisco did spot the Sodonokibi ransomware being installed via this vulnerability. This particular ransomware is specific to Windows. It will encrypt the user's files and also delete shadow and backup copies of any files. Now, this ransomware, just like the Unix crypto coin miners that we have seen over the weekend, are pretty well recognized by antivirus. This is commodity malware, so nothing here is really targeted anymore at this point. Every WebLogic instance that is exposed and is vulnerable is actively being abused by these exploits. Now, Facebook's marketplace apparently had a very classic flaw in that it leaked the exact location of sellers. This is actually a vulnerability that has happened to various similar sites. Now, in the case of Facebook, when you place an item for sale, you can specify how closely you would like to let buyers know your location. So you can, for example, specify, hey, just say that I'm within that city or that part of the city. But apparently what's actually being sent back by J- by Facebook's API as part of a JSON encoded response is the exact location of the seller when the ad was placed. This is not the first time something like this happened. Uh, probably the largest uh, sort of leak like this that I'm aware of was with Craigslist back in the day. Now with Craigslist, you upload your own pictures and Craigslist failed to strip the EXIF data. Now, Most mobile phones do attach exact geolocation information to images. So uh, these images then again revealed the exact location of the seller, which in some cases led to targeted burglaries. In Facebook's case, the problem wasn't this EXIF data, it was the location information collected by Facebook when you placed the ad and apparently they did store the exact location, also echoed it back. Instead of just actually storing the approximate location that was needed in order to indicate the buyer where to approximately find the particular item. And well, it's not just Oracle WebLogic and Java coders that are struggling with deserialization vulnerabilities. Another example that was just fixed is the Revive ad server. This is an open source ad server that you can use to serve advertisements on your web page and manage them. And it also suffered from a deserialization of untrusted data vulnerability that can lead to arbitrary code execution. At fault here is the XML RPC interface. And yes, this ad server is written in PHP. PHP deserialization vulnerabilities aren't quite as common as in other languages like Java and .NET, but yes, they certainly do exist. And then I got two tools that are supposed to help you with the triage part of your incidents response. First one actually was written by a SANS instructor, Eric Zimmerman, and that's Cape. Basil today wrote about it and gave a little introduction to it in a diary. Cape, short for Crawl Artifact Parser and Extractor, is a tool that you download, install on a system, and then you can very quickly, with a simple GUI, decide which files would you like to extract and preserve from a potentially compromised system. 
The second tool is Automactic. Uh, now, unlike uh, Cape uh, Automactic, as the name kind of implies, is specializing on Mac OS. Similar concept. Now, um, Automactic is Python based. Again, you download it, install it in a system, and then you select uh, from various modules which tools, uh, which uh, parts of the system would you like to have extracted and summarized. Automactic also summarized summarizes its finding in an easy to read uh, report. Now, neither one of these tools, of course, is meant to sort of be a complete instant response tool. They're really very useful if you need a quick look at a system to sort of make the decision, is it worthwhile actually doing a full instant response on the system? Or can I probably assume that this system hasn't been touched, hasn't been compromised? Well, uh, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.